Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's video is about traps. Not traps set for animals or for other people, but traps in antennas. The question came from Brad Hollis, who says, I've heard you refer to a trapped antenna. To what does the term trapped refer? Well, of course, I'm going to go into it in a little bit more depth than just say it's that. Um, but uh, we'll take a look here. So I've got some charts on the computer. Let's take a look. Trapped antennas have been around for a long time. I'm going to show you some examples of traps in real antennas, and then we'll look at how they work. This right here is an antenna from Alpha Delta Communications. Uh, and the traps are the things that have got the red wire. They're coils wound on plastic forms. And uh, in here, uh, we have the MFJ 17754 20-40 meter, uh, 20 meter and 40 meter trap dipole. That's uh, 14 megahertz and seven megahertz. Um, this happens to be one of the candidates for uh, the reference antenna, but it didn't make the cut. Uh, but as it turns out, it's the antenna that I had up when the first uh, heavy snowfall came. And so it's the one that I'm still using right at the moment. Um, one thing that I did notice with it, it covers all of the 20 meter band, but only about half of the 40 meter band. And these things over here are the traps, okay? Now here is an example of a vertical antenna. I've got it leaned over quite a bit. This is the high gain uh, AV, 14 AVQ uh, vertical trapped antenna. This part from the bottom up to here is 10 meters. If you include up to the second trap, it's 15 meters. If you include up to here, it's 20 meters. And if you include the whole thing with the capacity hat on it, is for 40 meters. This is a trapped vertical antenna. Now, a lot of vertical antennas nowadays are multiband, but don't use traps per se. A trap is a specific thing. Let's take a look. This, I'm going to give it the dimensions of the MFJ uh, 17754 dipole here and let's see how this works. Okay this middle part here 16 feet on either side is a 20 meter dipole from here to here. Now there is a tuned circuit right here. A tuned circuit. It's got capacitance and it's got inductance. Now you may look at traps and go well where's the capacitor? Well, as it turned out, turns out, if you look at these traps like this, there's a lot of inter-wire capacitance inside the coil itself. So the coil has inductance, but it also has some capacitance in there. And you can control how much that is by the wire size and things like that. Or some traps actually have a capacitor in there, okay? Now what happens is that the trap is a resonant circuit. It's got inductance and capacitance. Now remember that inductance and capacitance are kind of opposite each other. So when the coil stores energy in the magnetic field, it's getting that energy from the electric field and the capacitor, and then it reverses once a cycle. So you get these currents flowing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in here. You can get very high circulating currents. But what's interesting about this is that for this wire right here, seeing the trap, it looks like an open circuit. So this part of the antenna, and the same on the other side, is not part of the antenna when you're operating at 20 meters or 14 megahertz, okay? So the only part of the antenna that the transmitter sees is part A 
in part A, over here, up to the trap. This is why it's called a trap, because it can't go any further. Okay, length B is effectively disconnected. Now if we switch things around and go to 7 megahertz, okay, to 7 megahertz, we still got our 16 feet on the A's on either side, but this right now is no longer a tuned circuit. Uh, because it's below the frequency that it is tuned for, it acts as the combination of the L and C. The L swamps the C, and so this acts inductive. So it acts like loading for the remaining part of the antenna. Now, if you add all this up, you got 32 plus 5 plus 5 is 42 feet for the whole antenna, and that resonates on 40 meters. Well, a 40 meter dipole is normally 66 feet long, so this is a way to shorten an antenna. The problem, of course, is that when you put loading into an antenna, inductance like this, the antenna has less bandwidth than a full-size dipole, and so it won't cover the entire band. And in fact, that is a problem with the uh, MFJ17754 trapped dipole. It works great on 20, but it only covers about half of 40 because of this loading in here. Loading, meaning adding inductance to an antenna, uh, can physically shorten the antenna, okay, like this, can physically shorten it, but uh, because it's a higher Q antenna, the bandwidth is lower. You remember from studying uh, your, for your general license that high Q, uh, which is the quality factor, high Q means narrow bandwidth. Okay, so you've got a high enough Q in here that this whole thing, even though it's loaded properly for 40 meters, only covers about half the band, which is why I rejected the 17754 trap dipole from uh, consideration as the reference station antenna uh, and went with the MFJ2010, which is an off-center fed dipole and has no traps. Okay, so we have a tuned circuit, right? We note that uh, when you're using it on the lower band, this part of the end is part of the antenna now. You've got some loading in here. The net difference between the L and the C, it's not the L and the C, it's the uh, inductive reactants and capacitive reactants. Remember, um, when you go down in frequency, the capacitive reactants goes up and the inductive reactants goes down. So the inductive dominates here. Okay, um, and so we've got to look at now uh, the reason that we don't use traps for everything. Uh, this is an older technique, not used so much, although you can get trapped antennas very readily, is because of the high circulating currents in the tank circuit. The trap is a resonant tuned circuit and therefore has very high circulating currents. These are the, the inductance and the capacitance exchanging energy at an RF rate and every time they do it, it comes through the wire. And the wire has a non-zero uh, resistance and so the amount of power lost at heat is the I squared R losses and it does it so many times that unless you have an extremely high Q circuit you're going to have heat losses in the traps okay heat losses in the traps so this is where people tend to poo poo trapped antennas is because of the losses in the traps we lose some of the power here as heat if you can get this to be a very high Q circuit, then you can minimize that heat loss quite a bit, actually. But the problem that you get into is this over here. The higher the Q, the less the bandwidth. So it's a trade-off. Everything in the antennas is a trade-off. Now, the ARRL antenna book, where I got these drawings, 
also shows this drawing right here. This is a design, a real design, uh, from uh, C.L. Buchanan, W3 Delta Zulu Zulu. And this is a five band trapped antenna because remember if you go lower in frequency, the inductance will dominate. But if you go higher in frequency, the capacitance will dominate. And capacity at the end of a piece of wire tends to make it as though it's longer, okay? And whereas inductance in here allows you to shorten the wire um, because of the loading. So as it turns out, if you follow these dimensions exactly, you will get a five band trap dipole and a 75 ohm twin lead or 75 ohm uh, coax like uh, RG6, which you can get at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's for dirt cheap, um, uh, will work. The problem becomes these traps. Designing these traps, you have to go through the formulas to get 8.2 microhenries out of a coil and you've got to come up with 60 picofarads of capacitance somehow. And you will get some interwinding capacitance here. What you have to do is take a trap and use a grid dip meter or equivalent to determine the resonant frequency to find out where it is to make sure that you have um, something equivalent to what the resonant frequency should be in this idealized case. You can take the 8.2 microhenries and the 60 picofarads and plug them into the formula for resonance, find out what that is supposed to be. And then you construct something and you have to keep adjusting the capacitance so that you actually get that resonance. You can also use an antenna tuner to do this. MFJ makes a little thing that's kind of like a, an extra piece that you can put on your antenna tuner to turn it into the equivalent of a grid dip meter. Of course, it's transistor based, no, there are no grids in there. Okay, so that gives you a little idea of traps. So let's just take a look at the advantages and disadvantages. There are advantages to trapped antennas. They are easily multiband antennas and often shorter than full length dipoles. And they're less expensive than uh, some of the more exotic uh, antennas, certainly less expensive than uh, today's verticals. Uh, this vertical antenna right here, the high gain 14 AVQ covers uh, 40, 20, 15, and 10, and it is uh, uh, less than $300. So they can be cheaper. The disadvantage is you do have losses in the traps unless they are very high Q, which also to get the high Q to reduce the loss often means that the antenna will not cover the entire band. It'll only cover part of the band. You can tune it for the part of the band you want, but it does take some work. Now, other antennas that you might consider that are multi-band dipoles, but um, don't suffer from the problems of trapped antennas. One is a fan dipole. A fan dipole is just several dipoles brought together and fed at their centers with just one single coax feeding all of them. They can be a little tricky to tune, but they do work. They do cover the whole band and you don't have trap losses in there. Another is off-center fed dipoles. Off-center fed dipoles, you can do some amazing things with them. Uh, you can uh, feed them um, with, uh, let's see, the reference station antenna is an off-center fed dipole. It fed at the one-third point and uh, it covers all of 40 and all of 20 and as a bonus 10 and 6 also. You could always put up multiple single dipoles too. One I didn't put on here but that you could consider are the end-fed half-wave dipoles like the my antennas in fed half wave 8010 or 4010 uh, those can cover 
all of 40. They'll never cover all of 80. There's no single antenna that covers all of 80. But uh, you could uh, do some very interesting things with that. I happen to have uh, that infed halfway from my antennas erected right now. The only thing I need to do is tramp out in the snow and disconnect the uh, 17754 and reconnect the uh, uh, infed half wave. The only problem is I've got a broken ankle, so I'm not going to be traipsing through the snow anytime soon. All right, there you have it. We've learned what traps are and why people like them and why people don't like them and why they've kind of faded a little bit from the antenna scene because uh, traps can be, they don't have to be, but can be lossy. Uh, they convert uh, the I squared R losses in the, uh, the tank uh, current uh, inside those little resonant circuits. I hope that you will subscribe uh, to my channel. Uh, the number of subscriptions is going up rapidly and I really appreciate that. And uh, my immediate goal is 100,000 because you get a cool plaque from YouTube for getting 100,000. Um, also, if you would like to help support this channel financially, please go to decastlercom support for various ways that you can do that, either directly through the tip jar or Patreon uh, or um, uh, other ways on PayPal. I also have uh, little memory sticks that have the uh, technician and the general and the extra videos on three different ones there that you can look at. Now those are the same videos that I've got up on YouTube. So you won't have to, if you've got good internet access, you don't need the thumb drive. You can just watch them for free on YouTube. So until we next meet, 73.